Hello, my dear students, uh, for another lecture about the uh, leadership styles. Uh, we talk about the uh, types of leadership. Uh, now we will complete, expand in the uh, definition and to talk about the types of leaders in any organization. So the main types of leadership styles, which we had before, we had uh, previously a lecture about them, are the autocratic and authoritarian uh, leader, or uh, and the other one, the democratic or participative leader, and the third was the laissez-faire, the laissez-faire uh, leader, or delegative, which means delegate, he delegate the power, or uh, or like he use the decentralization, and most of his decisions he does not do the decision alone but others are helping him and participate with him in the decision all the stuff and the team members participate with such uh, a leader in his own decisions so other styles we will handle today are the charismatic leader and the servant leader so we will know what do we mean by the charismatic leader and we will know also what do we mean by the servant leader okay the autocratic and authoritarian, which we talk about, let me remind you, given the power to make decisions alone, having uh, total authority, like remember just Hitler, Mussolini, uh, those uh, people who used to make the, 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 the decision by their own self without uh, taking the advice or the opinions of all around them from either from the staff or the other employees. Uh, it's closely supervises and controls people when they perform certain tasks. So there's no way out. So no way for the employees even to express their opinions. Because if you do something and he was not satisfied, then this will lead to a big uh, problem, consequences for you. So the, this kind of leader, I'm talking about the autocratic, is always uh, like he wants to do everything by himself. He does not uh, listen to others, but he rather he only talks, and he only talks for uh, and he only order. Once if the decision uh, was right, then he belongs this to himself. But if the decision was wrong, he blame the others and put the results because of the performance or because whatever the others done. So he put the blame on them. On them. That's if the decision failed. Uh, those are the, the main traits. The democratic is, democratic is the other, on the other hand, like the democratic will be uh, it includes one or more people in the decision-making process because people here are participating in decision-making and maintains the final decision-making authority also. So he keeps for himself the final decision, but still he is uh, like, he might take the opinion of the others around him. He might ask them for their opinion. So the participative or democratic is also like we said here, there is participation from the others in the uh, decision making, but the final decision still is in his hand. How about the laissez faire? We talked before about the laissez faire or delegative. Delegative from delegation, delegative from delegation. Delegation means that I, I sacrifice with my part of my authority to the lower level or I give uh, empower, I empower the lower levels on, in organization. This is the meaning of the delegative, delegative, delegative. Okay. So allow people to make their own. So the meaning of, like we said before, the they say fair means let it be, let it be. So he allowed the other people, around the other people in the organization to work, he believe in their own uh, capabilities. He believes that these people are doing very well. And if there is any mistake done, he corrected with them. 
uh, he trusts the outcomes of the workers or the employees, the staff, the team who is working with him. He trusts their own uh, performance. And that is the laissez fair. Okay. We say also allow people to make their own decisions. Leads is still responsible. Leader is for the decisions that are made. He's still responsible about these decisions. The styles allow greater freedom and responsibilities. Also, it allow greater freedom and responsibilities because it is built on the kind of, it's a kind of democratic also because he gives the others, empower the others in making decisions. So he empower them in making decisions. So that's why it is uh, of a good, uh, of a good consequences. And also, however, you need competent people around you or nothing will get done. So he depend on the work of all the people together. So those was about the three types of leaders and we had questions before, so we don't need to go further for more questions uh, uh, for that part, but we will start now on the charismatic leader. What do you mean by the charismatic leader? What do you mean by the charismatic leader? He leads by creating energy and eagerness in people. So he make the people like have eagerness to do his own decision or to he like, he said something regarding the work. So the people will do it voluntarily and they will do it with eagerness. They, 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 they feel with enthusiasm to do it. A leader is well liked and inspires people. He motivate the people. He is very good motivator because he well is well motivating the people. Appeals to people's emotional side. This is also another point. So I will stop here for about five minutes and I will put question now about uh, what are the characteristics. of charismatic leader. What are the characteristics of charismatic leader? And we will go for the answer right away. What are the characteristics for the charismatic leader? And we will sure for go for the answer right away. Here it is, what are the characteristics of charismatic leader based on the previous uh, page. And we'll stay here for around five minutes before we move forward. So we are back. Let us move forward for a new page and a new work. The second kind which we will talk about today is the servant leader. The ser servant leader, servant. What do you mean by servant here? The highest priority of the leadership is to. So he give a priority, this leader give a priority for encourage, support, and enable people to fulfill their full potential and abilities. So he's also like inspiring them, but he support them more than just inspiring. He enabled them and he uh, like he's uh, giving them um, a push, like he's giving them a push, not with their own, it's totally with their own willing, okay help people achieve their goals and work for the people and work for the people. Actually, I won't because uh, the servant leader and the charismatic leader are very important. 
works for the people. He like kind of denying himself because he like the others, so he works for the others. Uh, helps the people achieve their goals. He always his hand in helping the people to achieve the goals. Uh, uh, the aspiration of leader is to encourage, support, and enable people to fulfill their own full, uh, to full potential and abilities. So he helped them wherever they are to fulfill their own abilities. He helped them to fulfill their own abilities, and this is the core of this type of leader that he helped the others to do uh, to do their best, to get out their best, to he's just not giving them just guidelines, but he's helping him whatever he can to do that. Uh, so we will go now for a video for both of them. We will start with the charismatic leader, a video about the charismatic leader. Then we will move into the servant leader. The charismatic, then we will move to the servant leader. So it takes time here for my own. Uh, sorry for this computer. It's uploading in. See, of course. We're searching for more points regarding the charismatic leader. this one it's about the charismatic leader perspective that's been adopted by some leadership experts focuses on how leaders are seen through the eyes of followers. That is, in what ways and to what extent is it important that followers and other observers attribute leadership to others? The three primary approaches of leadership through the eyes of followers are transformational leadership, charismatic leadership, and attributions of leadership. Let's take a look at charismatic leadership. Perspective based on charismatic leadership assumed that charisma is an individual characteristic of the leader. Charisma is a form of interpersonal attraction that inspires support and acceptance. Charismatic leadership is accordingly a type of influence based on the leader's personal charisma. All else being equal, someone with charisma is more like... All else being equal, some with charisma is more likely to be able to influence others than someone without charisma. So the charisma means like a power of influencing the others, a power of influencing the others. Okay. ...to be able to influence others than someone without. Robert House first proposed a theory of charismatic leadership based on research findings from a variety of social science disciplines. So the charismatics, they have self-confidence, like you see here, firm confidence in their beliefs and ideas or ideals, and a strong need to influence people. They feel always they want to affect the others. Positively, of course, not negatively, positively. Okay. 
his theory suggests that charismatic leaders are likely to have a lot of self-confidence, firm confidence in their beliefs and ideals, and a strong need to influence people. They also tend to communicate high expectations about follower performance and to express confidence in their followers. This figure portrays the three elements of charismatic leadership in organizations that most so the charismatic leader is having envisioning vision, expectations, behavior, engineering, excitement, and confidence and success, enabling support, see, see, he supports the others, he emphasizes the others, he or emphasizes and he's having confidence. Most experts acknowledge today. First, charismatic leaders are able to envision likely future trends and patterns to set a high expectations for themselves and for others, and to model behaviors consistent with meeting those expectations. Next, charismatic leaders are able to energize others by demonstrating personal excitement, personal confidence, and constant patterns of success. Finally, charismatic leaders enable others by supporting them, empathizing with them, and expressing confidence in them. The charismatic leader is characterized by these three fundamental attributes. As illustrated, these are behaviors resulting in envisioning, energizing, and enabling. Charismatic leaders can be a powerful force in any organizational setting. So this is about the charismatic leader. Uh, this was the first kind. Second type is the servant leader. We know something about the servant leader. We'll know some ideas, we'll have some ideas about what do we mean by servant leader? What do we mean by the servant leadership? Uh, like I said, focus primarily on the growth and well being of people and the communities. So he focused uh, basically, he focused on the uh, people themselves uh, more than he focused on the work. Well, tradition, okay. So he focused more on the people the relationships and of course things also leading to work. So let us see here. Uh, we just need a small uh, video that handling, we don't need a long one. What is a servant leadership? Let us see this video. Servant leadership emphasizes values that encourage innovation, employee empowerment, and the development. Of so he encouraged innovation, employees empowerment. The word employees empowerment means give them the authority to the employee or the team worker or the staff. He delegate for them the authority to do a part of the job. He has a big confidence in his own employees. He has a great confidence in his own employees. He uh, delegates for them the power, and that is the core of the idea itself, and the development of leaders as well. So he also uh, encourage them, give them the power, and in the same time, he focus on the development of leaders as well. So all those are the works of those kind of the servant uh, leader. And he focus on the work rather than himself. He, he, he all totally, his aim is to work for the people and do uh, and try to help the people. Okay. Doing their own work. Okay. And of leaders who serve an organization stakeholders first. For groups that embrace its core concepts, servant leadership is pivotal to their success. Robert K. Greenleaf coined the term in a 1970 essay. Greenleaf was suspicious of anyone who focused on leading, yet ignored serving. As he put it, quote, caring for persons, the more able and the less able serving each other, is the rock upon which a good society is built. I, I believe this sentence is, can tell us uh, even the core word or one of the 
uh, key words is serving each other, serving each other. So we care here in the, serv in the servant uh, leader, a kind of leader that is putting his concern to serve the people and the people first, people comes first. Okay. Society is built. Servant leadership means management shares key decision-making powers with employees who work directly with customers. Companies that are close. So the servant leadership will empower the employees to work with the public directly. He, he totally his aim is to the work is done. The work is done with the people. So he care about the people and how to help the people, whatever he can, to, to the maximum point, to a great extent. Most of their customers make better decisions to retain those customers and acquire new ones. To effectively use servant leadership, firms must listen and be receptive, and they must remain connected to customers and industry developments. Feedback from external parties can shape product development for the better. Johnson & Johnson is among the most renowned firms to embrace servant leadership. It's corporate creed to serve customers, employees, communities, and shareholders. Look at this, to serve customers, increase the word serve. I'm here to help all the people, the customers, the employees, everyone. I'm happy as a leader to help everyone. Either he was customer or he was employees, or he was shareholder or even a stakeholder who has any benefit to work with the organization. Uh, those all are for the help, okay. Holders contains the key aspects. Companies like Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns reportedly placed greed and growth over customers and they suffered during the 2008 credit crisis. Servant leadership companies such as Home Depot look to develop managers that focus on serving customers and the firm. There's as example, Home Depot to serve the customers and the people who is, are working inside Home Depot themselves. So it, 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 it focus on both of them at the same time on the client and as well as on the, uh, the, the customers who come to work. So those was about the servant leader, the highest priority of this leader is to encourage support and enable people to fulfill their abilities, help people achieve their goals and work for the people. And you see always the word people, 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 people here, people here, uh, encourage all to fulfill the potential abilities of the people as well. So people are the core, focus of the servant leader. Okay, we'll go now for a question. We'll stop here for about five minutes for what are the characteristics uh, regarding this leader also. The servant leader, comment. So comment means talk, say what you know about the servant leader say what you know about the servant leader. There's the meaning of the word comment. Uh, there's the meaning of the word comment. You will talk, you will say everything about the servant leader. The servant leader comment. This question, we will stop here for around five minutes to have your answers. Thank you.
So we are back now. And we'll go to the next uh, slide. So we, we must have a combination of styles that also a leader can also be a combination of the styles which we talked about before. He might be more than one of these types. What a leadership style do you think Adolf Hitler as example was? Was he a democratic or autocratic uh, uh, or whatever? So we talked before now about the uh, autocratic and the authoritarian leader. We talk about the democratic and participative. We talk about the laissez-faire uh, laissez uh, leader or the delegative leader, the delegative. We talk about the charismatic leader. We talk about the servant leader. Those are the types of leaders in brief. Those are the types of leaders in brief. Let me also try to put a question here so that you will not forget the types of leader. I know it's not too much questioning. What are the types of leaders we discussed? What are the types of leaders that we discussed previously here? What are the types of leaders? So we have many types of leaders. Those are the main types of leaders which we discussed before. And that's what I want you to know here in this part. What are the types of leaders that we discussed previously? Those are our types of leaders. Uh, this is the questions uh, here about and all the types of leaders we discussed uh, previously. Chad, see you in the next video. Thank you so much. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the day.